I don't, do, do I need it much brighter? Oh, you don't need that. I also feel like there's so many pillows. Okay, we're on. Oh, it says you started a live fundraiser now. Doesn't matter. No, I know, I'm, I just didn't know that. It's just under a fundraiser, so people can donate to ALS if they want to. It's an option. It's an option. Okay, so we'll just, we have like 400 and 500 people on right now. Hi guys, pay attention. Sorry. It's Wine Wednesday. Yeah. Have you been waiting all week? I know we have. Okay. Ow. Okay, well last Wine Wednesday turned out Ow. to be a total <laughs> shit show because we got accidentally drunk. It ended up in our so toilet bad. completely flooding and that's a story for another day. We don't have a lot of time today, so sorry. You're gonna have to be on pins and needles for us to tell us that story for us to tell you that story. But it is a tale. But anyways, we're kind of gonna kind of rush through this because we have a stacked itinerary. So right now we're partnering with Chateau Saint Jean. So if Ryan is here, Ryan just requests to join the live. I'm gonna bleep you in. And then at eight o'clock, we have Sarah Lucina joining us. And that is gonna be wild. I just talked on the phone with her and she is ready. Um, here we go. Chateau Saint Jean, great. Okay. People know what to do. I know. It's like he's done this before. Yeah. Okay, so Ryan from Chateau Saint Jean is gonna be coming in and joining us right now. Um, and then we're gonna talk about wine. And I'm Kim's already opened wine, so she is just ahead of the game. Seven I have a pimple coming in. And I tried to cover it. No, it hurts. Hi. Hi. How are you? How are you doing? Wow, is that a real backdrop? Is that that is a real backdrop. Oh, okay. I, Picture. I, I put a window into like Tuscany. Uh, well, I, I wish that we were in Tuscany, but I mean, uh, I mean no, we we're in a hundred degrees Sonoma today. Oh, uh, a hundred degrees? It's been that way for almost three days now. Oh my, oh, my God. Goodness. Does yeah. that mean? hurt the plants at all or are we all kosher are we all good we're all kosher no okay. worries no worries everything's good we're, okay, we're good. Used to the heat here so i want to go over what we'll be doing today but it's going to yeah. be a game so my sister actually needs to leave the room quickly and i'll call you back when it's time now i just take it i don't even fight her on it yeah anymore. she doesn't fight just... me on it anymore okay so ryan here's what we're gonna okay. do okay. Kim, close the door and don't listen you a-hole okay it's called were you fucking listening? And basically what we want you to do is we just want you to go over all the stuff about the wine, try to make them a little bit dif differentiate so that okay. I can take notes on what some major differences are. And then I'm gonna ask her questions, like say one is in a high altitude, whatever, and I'm gonna be like, okay, like which one was raised in a high altitude? She's gonna have to guess. Hopefully she gets a few right so she looks like a good student, but okay. um, we just try to incorporate fun games into it. So I like it gonna do a horrible job i'm sure but okay that's <laughs> okay kim come back in did you hear me were you cheating I swear I didn't hear. okay no cheating kim i didn't cheat okay Don't so worry, which one do you want to start with well it's very hot here i am been just eyeing down the brew rosé so we're definitely gonna have to pop that and get that going okay cool well let's hope <laughs> Oh my god, no. And it's always fun to pop bubbles when we get things started, right? Yeah. And that's why I waited until we got on with you, because I wanted that sound. I love it. Okay, so just bear with me, because I'm not using a champagne flute. Should I be? Or is this okay? No. I have a that's champagne flute. That's totally okay. Okay. Yeah. What's the a lot of people are drinking cham bubbly out of, so this is sparkling wine, not champagne. Okay, good. Right, not from champagne. But um, a lot of people, I, I like to choose the old... You know, oh, like that. growing 20 style. So that that's what I'm drinking out of today. So. Oh, I should wait. No, you don't have to wait. There's there's no real rules about this. Okay, cool. Because I'm like eager. I have <laughs> ready without me. I had not even one glass, so don't worry. I'm so young. I, I, I'm sure that you had a glass before we started, right? Yeah, just yeah, one. Yeah, she did. I didn't. Okay, I did. Get from a pop. <laughs> because I've been working my butt off these past few days, but. Oh my gosh. I'm so glad you got the wine. I know, oh I gosh. need it. Thank God. Okay, uh, so why don't you tell us cool. a little bit about okay. this wine. So Fast and Furious here. So we have a Rosé Brew. Um, the uh, first uh, vintage release was 1980. Um, it's a, um, 
done in a cuvee uh, close tank fermentation. So uh, basically it's all fermented in the tank, traps CO2 um, in the wine, um, and then it's filtered and then it goes through a dosage. So the dosage is how much sugar is put into the wine. This particular wine is a brut, so it's a drier style, okay? And then what you're gonna get here is you're gonna get pale pink colors. Can you smell it? Okay. Right, little fresh berries. Mm. Little cherries on it. Oh, berries and cherries, remember mm -hmm. that? Yeah, they're different. It smells really good, actually. Uh, delicious, and then it's a, it's a blended Pinot Noir and Barbera. So there's a couple different grapes in it. Um, and I think that just gives it that nice berry flavor, some solid acid, minerality, all those good things you're looking for in the wine. All right. Maybe a quiz. Is that why you're taking notes? It's not a quiz. Right. I'm, I'm just <laughs> making making nervous. nervous. I'm going at a steady <laughs> pace, though, too, because I want her to be like, tripped a little bit. Notes as you're answering questions, like it, it's <laughs> Mm -hmm. My hands are sweating. so. Cheers! I we have to cheers. That's part oh, of the deal I, here. Oh, offensive! Cheers. We we're sharing. Then you gotta look at it, look into each other's eyes. When oh, you're, okay. Right? Otherwise, everyone gets freaked out. Everyone bad sex for everyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell me what I have to do. Okay, perfect. So, shall we move to the next one? Oh, oh my God. Yeah, you ready? Let's do it. I'm ready. This is a beautiful Good. bottle, by the oh, way. Man, I, I love mean, this bottle. Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's uh, our flagship I, wine. It, I rarely like really freak out over bottles, but it's just so beautiful. It's, so it's beautiful. So Margaret Sovereign is our winemaker, and um, and this she's going on her fortieth vintage of uh, of making wine for Chateau Saint Jean. Hey. This is our flagship wine that we have here. Okay. It's considered a red wine because it is a Bordeaux blend. Um, and Bordeaux basically means it's made out of the classic varietals from Bordeaux. So you have Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Cobb Franc, Malbec, and Petit Verdot. Okay. It's a predominantly Cabernet Sauvignon. And then we actually get it from five different areas as well. We get uh, it from different areas in Sonoma. Um, mm -hmm. We get it from Knights Valley, Moon Mountain. Um, we get some from Sonoma Valley. Um, Dry Creek area and then Alexander Valley. So we have, it's in, it's all individually, the varietals are aged for, uh, for 20 months um, before we blend them together. Oh and um, yeah, so I hope you enjoy it. I'm gonna get this big old Bordeaux Chateau Saint Jean glass out here because that's what it's called for. It is really good. And what's the year on this? The 2016. 2016. So Cinque Sauvage, which literally translates to five varietals in French. So all your French speakers out there, you probably already knew that. Amazing. Okay. So. What are you getting out of it? What do you taste? It is time for the game. Were yeah. you even fucking listening? And that is the name That's of our game, game today. <laughs> no. <laughs> Someone's got to be uh, listening, no. right? <laughs> and so let's see, Kim, were you even fucking listening? This is the question. We've done about a hundred of these tastings. We obviously come to um, we come to Napa, Yonville a lot, so we've done a lot of them. Cool. And it seems that none of it sticks with us because we are rushed to get to the chase, which is basically just drink the wine. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm curious if Kim absorbed anything that you said. Oh, that's our sushi. Oh, Pete, can you grab that? Pete's here. He's going to grab our sushi because sushi and wine. It's fine. Good job, okay. Pete. So, which, right. which wine was released in 1980? The, uh, the first one, the rosé. Yep. Ding, 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 ding. Because I remember Jeez. that, um, yeah, it's nine years. Cheers. Kim got one right. She was Okay. Busted. All right. Cheers. Mm. Kim's got a point. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep tally too, so we keep this legit. Okay, great, great, great. Okay. Yeah, back checking. Exactly. Um, which underwent? I'm gonna botch this. A dosage. Yes. What's That's good. I like what that. Dosage. It has to do with the sugar content. 
something of that sort, right? Yes, you did perfect. The red one? Ah! 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 Oh, I knew I are failing. Actually, one more oh. time. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I really, I do listen. It's just that, like, I had a long day at work today. Ugh. All right. That's you, okay. That's all right. We have more questions. We have this more time for humiliation. More questions. Oh, my God. Okay. I was like an A student, so this is going to be so <laughs> Which of these wines are for variety of different areas. It's definitely the red because it's five. Absolutely. Different. Five varietals. Does that have to do with the area though, the varietals? So yeah, there's five varietals and there's five different areas that we get the grapes from. So it is a mix. It's it's a wild blend. Woohoo! So okay. It's all perfect. Back. You're doing it. Back. All right. Which is Cuvée tank fermented? The the champagne one, the Prosecco? It's not champagne. Prosecco, but, but it's fruit. Ding, 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 ding. Old California sparkling wine. All right. I have a 75 now. And <laughs> for your last. I see a student. No, no, I'll give you two more questions. I'll give you two All more right. questions. I'll give you, I think we have an attempt to. I'm literally sweating. Okay. Which is a 40th vintage? 40th vintage. 40th year vintage. Am I doing that right? 40 mm, the, the, uh, something has been made being made at, for the last 40 years yeah. from the same person by the same person yes oh that's Who is that person the female winemaker which is before the red wine before the and red what's wine. her name <laughs> Even I, don't know that. <laughs> I, I remember that it was a girl <laughs> yeah that's good that's yeah good. That's that's badass. what's her name <laughs> Margot Van Stavert. Okay. She's phenomenal. Margot. She's she's an award-winning winemaker. We're really super happy to have her at Chateau Saint Jean. Um, I so love if it. we go there, will she have a drink with us, or is she like too bougie? Too I hope so. And uh, <laughs> you know, I I don't want to promise anything, but if she's around, she's very friendly. Cool. Okay. Yeah. You, will you guys host us if we come to Napa? Uh, hundred percent, hundred ten percent. Okay. And we are opening. I'm at the winery right now. We are, I mean, not right, right, right now, but I'm going. We're getting things set up. We're starting to, you know, slowly reopen. But, and if, um, but people yes. to come, if people are in the area and they want to come to your winery, they can visit you. And I hear that you might offer some a unique experience. Do you offer an escape room there? We did. You but did. as in close proximities, escape rooms are. There's a little bit of, you know, trouble doing that as of the moment. Okay. Uh, but uh, make a reservation. Okay. We have some experiences that we're going to be opening up here over the next few weeks. So definitely make a reservation with us. And we really would love to see everyone back on the property. Okay. That's, our, that's everyone's goal. We will for sure be there to visit you guys. Good. Um, thank you so, so Wait, much. I thought I had one more question. Okay. All right. We got to wrap because Sarah's going to come on okay. now. But I got the uh, the code for everyone if they want to buy some wine. Yes, give us a code. Yes. I didn't even know okay, we had cool. a code. I know, I know, I know. I know. It's, uh, it's virtual. And so V-I-R-T-U-A-L is 30% off. And go to ChateauSaintJean.com and go. That's the deal. That's I it. think so. It's backwards to me. But yeah, yes, sorry, guys. That it's looks backwards. like it. But it's this. We have but to learn to write backwards in IG Live. Like we can, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, well, thank you so much for joining us, Ryan. This was honestly thank such a you pleasure. Thank so much. Kim, Kim was fucking I listening. 80. I got an 80. That's a B. Yeah, you're do I think you did great. Thank I you. I threw a lot yeah. of stuff at you really fast. So. She thank was you. she was listening, so we are proud of her. And you well did done. a thing, so I appreciate it. Thank Thanks you. for having me. Goodbye, and stay we'll safe. We'll see you soon. All right, take care. Okay. All right, we got to get... Let's get... Lacina on. I know. We didn't do our wines, so she's I know. She's to... gonna have to join us for our wines. All right, guys. Does we she... now have moved yeah. on to the next portion. I hope Kim, I'm proud of you. For what? Oh my For store. doing she did a great job. Let's all give Kim claps, everyone. Oh <laughs> Kim did a really good job. Uh Ryan was wonderful. Like, wow. He really he came in. He was so cute. He was adorable. He like, came in with all the information. You. Okay. Perfect. We are now moving on 
to the Lucina portion of this podcast, this live. So please bring your questions. I did make note of a few questions that you guys asked me, um, but here we go. I'm getting. Oh my Let's, yeah. Oh my God. Everybody's clapping for Kim. She did do a great job. Oh God. Okay. Well, there's my screen. That's not what we're supposed to do. How do I flip it? Okay. Everything's fine. <laughs> guys. Fully under control. We are good. Now we're going to add Lucina. There she is. The queen herself. I'm so excited. I know. Hi! Oh, it works! Woohoo! I can't believe you were able to do it. I was a little... Time out. Let me... I gotta make sure I can hear you. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, you look beautiful. Oh, you look so pretty. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm in the garage because it was either this or the bathroom. Great. Um, any, once you guys have kids, you'll understand. Yeah. That uh, it's either the bathrooms, your peace and quiet time, or the garage. So. Well, I, I'm really, I really have to say that I appreciate um, you not doing it in the bathroom because that would be really uncomfortable. I think a lot of questions would be asked. And I have to tell you, thank you so much for last week. I gave a little bit of a preview that after our live Wednesday last week, our toilet totally shit out on us. Yeah. It and just started flooding all over. And I happened to be asking Lucina at the time if she would come on this podcast saying that I wanted her to be my next guest. And I was had in the midst of it, had a panic attack. And she talked me through the process of how to apparently shut a valve on a toilet, which I had no idea was a thing. So thank you. I got full face body shower of toilet water. So that was pleasant. Yeah, it was... Um... It's like, it was like 11 o'clock my time and I have to work in the morning and I just, you're sending me videos of Kim being like, Michelle, FaceTime her. <laughs> and I'm like, what's going on? And the next thing I know, I'm getting photos of your bathroom flooding. And I'm like, shut the valve up, but you're texting me. I'm like, stop texting me and shut the valve up. So I legit had to make, I don't know if she showed you Kim, but I had to video it. Yeah, I had to go, Michelle. Here's the what the toilet looks like. Here's where the valve is. You twist the valve. Turn it off. Oh my god! I was, like, she goes, my landlord's not answering. I know. Don't call the fucking landlord. Oh my god! I shut the valve off. Oh, are you kidding me? I made this. A... The, the water was pouring out over the lid into our living room area, into our bedrooms. I mean, I couldn't figure it out. I honestly was like, this is why I pay renter's insurance. I'm going to bed, and when she I wake me. up, we'll see what happens. No, no, but the worst part of the whole thing, you thought that I would get the most pissed off. Here's half of my wine Wednesday. But you think I would be like, oh, my gosh, you too. Shut the valve off. You have water going all over. The one thing that annoyed me the most is, can I say it? Yeah, you can say it. Of course. Well, you I didn't can... have a trash yeah. bag in your trash can. Yeah. Our, I like know. sleeping on your mattress with no sheets. Come I on, didn't... dude. I didn't know. It was such I'm a... like, okay, you know, it's through the water for a minute. Put a freaking trash bag in your trash can. You... That was a big thing. I mean, how old are you? Bathroom, all how old are you? There's our makeup wipes, really. How old are you? I don't know. Well, now I have, now I have a trash yeah, bag in there. Good. There's a bag of today, and I was like, oh, all right, Michelle, I've never seen Elfie's body wash, I die. I'm like, oh my god. Kim goes in the bathroom and goes, what's this? Yeah. <laughs> you know, she was like, it's a trash bag. Sarah told me about them. I, yeah, I know. I found out. I found out I today. Like, did you, but did you order small ones? or No, I'm using, I'm using the recyclable size. Oh. <laughs> it's, a, it's a gallon Ziploc bag. It's literally, yeah. yeah. That's a I mean, so. it's, it's not, I'm not, I haven't mastered the art of adulting. And I'm just wondering like, at what age and what life cycle do I have to be in to start doing adult things? Because so far I've done fairly well, just pushing it off, you know? So, well, I, I think there's a different, I wouldn't say you've mastered adulting. Like I legit remember you calling me one time when you were sick, like, um, I'm throwing up. How do I feel better? Yes. Oh my God. So mastering. Okay. So there's the difference between like not growing up and like partying and like, you know, running around naked. And then there's um, not knowing how to shut your toilet off. Um, not using trash bags in your trash can. Um, not knowing like about chicken noodle soup when you're sick and, and Tums and things like that. Yeah. So I think we're talking about two different things. Here. Right. Right. I'm, I'm not running around naked anymore. I actually stopped doing that, like, for quarantine. And I think I've turned. But I think, and as I progress through this life, I find out these life 
lesson. So maybe at the age of 50 or something of that sort, I'll start to know. But like, look, I've already grown so much. Now I know how to handle sick because you taught me. Now I know that the trash cans in the garbage. Now I know how to shut off a valve. So basically, you are my mother. And um, mm -hmm. my mom, mom, I'm your mom is uh -oh. just mom, just so you know, like you failed all oh 29 years and now i actually I'm just kidding. my mom is amazing I'm i dress you i dress you but now now <laughs> my mom knows it's my fault i'm an enabler <laughs> i i literally i dress you i i make you i bring you back from the dead you know i tell you like if you call me with the hangover i i listen honey you can't do that again all right and and i know you're gonna say that i'm never drinking again yes you will but let's yeah. you be more that. like your sister. I, oh yeah, sure. That I aspire to be like her. But listen, I know that you're not drinking wine. You're drinking bush lights, and yeah. I mean, you go out to try to find bush lights so we could drink with you. But unfortunately, they don't have them here in Jersey. So we had. To <laughs> is that about the same thing? No. <laughs> okay. This is, like, this is like gold in Iowa. All and right. This is like. What, That's like offer? trash, dude. Offer? Would you say this, this is, is college, right? This is like basement college. Well, we have yeah, to... like, hey, have you heard of um, Keystone? Like Keystone Light? Have you ever heard of that? Yeah. yeah. Okay, it's that's like the beers, equivalent, right? Is that's the equivalent. Our couch. Have you heard of, uh, like, what is that? Stella, Ar what is it? Stella Artois. Artois. That's, that's this of uh, uh, Midwest beer. I don't know if I believe it. And it's a tall boy. Look at that. Look at yours. Look how big mine is. Yeah, you got yours. a you got a fat boy or whatever you call it. Tall boy. What? A fat boy? <laughs> it's a tall boy. Have you never what? Oh, I drink wine, not beer. And let's be clear. Let's be clear, I drink wine, not beer. And now I'm rhyming. <laughs> Somebody's <laughs> not it tastes like seltzer. We've devolved. Okay. Is that alcohol in here? It honestly tastes like seltzer. You guys should have just shotgunned them. My That's what he said. He goes, Sarah. just shotgun them. Okay, yeah. so I guess we should ask some of these questions, right? Let's get down to it. Wait, can we just quickly do our wines? All right. Kim always likes to do the wines because she always has the best one. And it's basically a good way of right after I do, like, what I just did, which is embarrass her publicly. Actually, she, she won that quiz. But she likes to come in and look like an idiot because I never know what to bitch about. And hers are always great. So, Kim, what is your wine? I have two wines. My first wine is, um, everyone should understand this in quarantine, when you're watching a show with someone else, like, how annoying it is. Like, Michelle likes to stay up late. I like to wake up early. So when we're watching shows together, I want to go to bed. I'm like, let's pick this up tomorrow morning. And then she'll watch an episode without me. Then I have to I to never watch lunch. an episode without you. In fact, that's yesterday, what I watched. Yes, yesterday you said, all right, I'm going to watch this without you. And I said, that would make me upset. I don't watch things before. And did I? No, but I'm no. just saying it's very complicated I would to watch never. a show with someone. That's number one. Number two, I'm She's two lines these. today, folks. She's trying to one up us, Sarah. No, she I'm not. I'm not. It's just that I took my walk today and I sat down on a nice bench and I was reading my book, trying to decompress from my work day. And these guys were like throwing footballs over my head. And <laughs> I don't know, are you athletic? Were you on a football team? Are you a real athlete? Probably not. Is this gonna hit me in the face? I just feel like Social distancing should always apply sports, and you should take your football six feet away from me so that if you mess up, I still feel protected. Like, I do not want to get hit with the football. The Brady Bunch, remember that scene? No, I don't think I was alive for the Brady Bunch. Yeah, but Kim, I'm with you on both of those. Wyatt works overnights, and, like, so we have to DVR all of our shows. And so I'm at home when they're like on and I, I, I click on the menu and it's ready to watch and I can't watch it because I have to wait for him. It's so, so it totally blows. So maybe we should start watching TV together, Kim. And then like Wyatt and Michelle can watch TV together. That's fine. I would be down to watch with Wyatt. He's dope. So I'm, I'm in on this idea. All right. You guys, this is a new alliance. Okay. <laughs> Um, well, first off, I think in general, we can all bit I can bitch about people exercising around me when I'm outside. This was not gonna be my wine. But now that we're bringing it up. I mean, all these exerciser people are walking but around. It's nice that people are exercising. Doing, just no, don't put me in danger. I mean, I feel like, shame. Don't hurt me. Everybody around me is moving <laughs> 10 times the speed of me when I'm just, just trying to go for a casual stroll. I just want to I don't want to break a sweat. I just want to walk. 
It's and not a competition who can walk around the park the fastest. I no. feel offended when people are exercising around me. Do that in the space of your own <laughs> routine area. Right. And it's not my bitch. My wine of the week is that I played the secret Hitler game this week, which is like this strategy game. And basically half of the team are fascists, half of the team are liberals. And the liberals, you have to try to figure out who's a liberal, who's a fascist, so that you can overtake the, the government, whatever. Moral of the story is that I was a good guy, which I'm always a good guy, right, Sarah? And I had to try to convince everybody else that I was a good guy. And I had to read on the game pretty early on. And Wait, nobody so now, is this like zombies? What is it? Is this like that zombie game we played on the island? I don't know what zombie game is. I no. think that's Oh. No, remember Nick made it up where um, if you were a zombie and then you touched somebody that was a zombie, then you became a zombie. <laughs> that must have been the call, or I must. No, have no, no, no. It was. <laughs> trust me. Trust me, Nick. Someone get Nick on the phone. On the phone. Get Nick on the horn. Remember, <laughs> remember, because then, uh, yeah, because Cam and Sophie played it with us, and Jeremy, we all played it, and like, so two I people are. Nick kept score. Two people are zombies. Remember. And everybody else isn't infected. And that Kim, whoever, someone, someone that was there, get on right now. We played that. I believe maybe you. Kim, maybe Kim and Sophie will address it on their live. Yeah. Podcast. Oh, we can, oh yeah. Good <laughs> yeah. Set. Kim and Sophie are doing a live after this. Maybe we'll take to the question portion of theirs to see if I'll they have to in. answer. Yeah, we'll type it in. Okay, so I'm not sure. I, I want to believe you, but I don't know. Our trust is a little, you know, it's a little shaky. So <laughs> I'm not sure. Perception is everything. My perception is <laughs> it didn't happen. Your perception it is. I don't Every know. Every time you say that, I'm going to What's the truth? I don't know. Okay. So anyways, uh, mine is that nobody believed me. I was telling the truth. And you know no why? It why? Was, I know why you don't remember it. It's because <laughs> we all played without you. <laughs> you know what? I'm about zero. <laughs> It sounds like the rest of my game. It sounds like Kim, all the, this Kim, is, don't leave me hanging. <laughs> I'm just going to go, should I just go stop in the corner while you guys go have fun? Should I just go <laughs> there? It was so funny when I visited you guys and I saw Sarah and she was like, in like, remember she was like in the tree with her husband and like, you guys yeah. were like, whatever. And you're like, oh, Kim. I was really hoping to get you drunk on the family visit. I'm so bummed there was no alcohol. And I was like, what? Because I was like, why do you want to get drunk on national television? I thought it's it would so be fun. Rude. I thought it would have been a fun. Me and Sarah actually got really drunk on That's Advantage. That's exactly what she said to me. And this was later in the game. We had so much fun on that Advantage. And it's such a shame that they cut it. Because it was I know. Bad. But we drank a lot of red wine. Had and a we ate that entire cake. An entire chocolate cake. I felt like out of Matilda. Like, the, like oh. you know, when they, like, forced the kid to eat all that chocolate cake. And he's like, I've never I seen it. Um, what's your wine of the week, Sarah? Okay, yeah. Okay, my wine of the week is more, like, a serious issue. Okay. Like, okay. your guys' were, like, more superficial. But mine's, like, <laughs> legit a problem. Okay. And it's when, and maybe you guys don't have it where you live, but, like, everybody oh. drives around here. And we have these things called cars. And so mm -hmm. anyway, when people are in their car by themselves and they're wearing those damn masks and gloves, it's like, time out. You're literally in the car by yourself. See. Take the thing off. Like, it, nothing drives me more oh my than God, I actually, I, it, I, I literally- That is such a good wine. Say it louder for the people in the back, Sarah. <laughs> Say it louder. Take the mask off. This, take it off. I, I kid you not. I had to go to the store the other day, and I walk in, and some guy, I've never seen this. You always see those things are, like, online, and, like, it's, like, people are making fun of, the, like, a maxi pad over their face or whatever. <laughs> this guy legit had a sleep shade upside down over his <laughs> mouth. I'm like, how? I'm kind of creative. Well, No. <laughs> I hope he, I hope he was doing it to be funny because it's absolutely hilarious. But if he wasn't, I'm just like, what is wrong with people? No, this I world mean, is evolving. We're watching it happen in real time. Yeah, it's it's awful. It's crazy. I mean, when I look over and I see people in masks and and gloves, I'm like, oh, that person's bonkers. Like, By themselves oh. in their car, alone. you're safe, just you alone. Yeah, you're alone. <laughs> That's like when you that's like when you look at people like here's another pet peeve when you look over and like somebody has all their windows rolled up and they're just smoking a cigarette and you're like oh. 
We're like, oh my god, I am personally victimized by your life decisions. Like, what led you here? <laughs> I know, and it brings me back to like being five and riding around with like my friend's moms or something, and because my mom never smoked, and you're like in a Ford Taurus with cloth seats, and the windows are all up, and it's just like Liggett's cigarette smoke all over. <laughs> And you're in the back seat, so you're like car sick on top of it, and then all the smoke. <laughs> really? It's the worst thing ever. What a terror. I know. <laughs> it's a nightmare of mine. Middle America thing. Like, we barely get <laughs> <It> this. <laughs> Come visit, and I'll hotbox you in a car. <laughs> I can only dream. I can only dream. Maybe one day. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. We're switching into We're switching. I, get it. I have time. so many questions that have been sent to me for you guys. We've also already raised. Cool that I pulled my hair. Yeah, Michelle, yeah, it looks great. Look okay? No, it looks cute. On the yeah. island, when I pulled my hair up, Michelle was like, ugh. No, we're on TV. You don't want to do that. Because <laughs> <laughs> we look great. Quickly, a quick plug before we go into that. We have already raised $605 for it's ALS amazing. through this line. So thank you guys all. Anybody who um, has donated, thank you so much. If you haven't donated, feel free to donate. Um, obviously, it's for a good cause. Even if it's a dollar, like $1, $2, whatever you have, we appreciate it. Okay, now moving on. That's okay. What I, said. I do have fan questions, but the first fan question, since I'm on this show, is from, from me. <laughs> um, Sarah, I just want to know, can you give us a quick update on the Fiji line? How's it going? Is there a new line coming out soon? Has quarantine affected it? Like, just fill me in on the Sarah Lucina um, you know, Fiji line. Sure. So, you know, when we returned, it was going to be a big launch, right? Yeah. And um, Michelle had come out and um, she, she was trying a lot of things on um, for our summer launch. But then once this quarantine thing happened, we actually switched over to masks for a while. And, um, you know, a lot of people would like to see it revealed today, but not on Wine Wednesday. I have to save it for Fashion Friday. So, um, Okay. Summer line is getting ready to roll out. We also have a mask line, so you'll just have to wait and see. Okay. I love that you're using your your platform right now to make masks and all of your resources. Like, I just feel like, wow, you are so... So we thank you. Like, what a creative... creative, creative like, I know. I, I know you had to be thinking, like, could she get any better? And then I did. I know. You always surprise us. Every I, time. You're welcome. I like to nominate myself to be in the next runway show because oh. like Michelle had a little spin which was like reminiscent of a stripper move. I can't exactly <laughs> do that. Like, mm -hmm. did you not feel that way? Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> I wouldn't say it was a stripper move, but okay. We um go on. But like I could give you like I've been to two fashion weeks now. I could give you like a real runway model walk if Ooh. you And not she right has now, but. she has legs for days. I do have such perfect. Legs. Yeah. They just go on for a day. Well, so a fun fact about those shorts, too. Originally, that's where the SL Fiji line started. And I fixed Michelle's pants because they were they had holes in them. Yeah. And, you know, she needs to be a proper lady while on national television. So I definitely wanted to Somebody show her. Looked out for her. Yeah. You're welcome again. Thank you. <laughs> and you uh, I crotch in my pants, and then you gave me shorts to walk around in because those. Well, were so, so the shorts were originally made for Ben because Ben only had jeans, and like, who likes to walk around in jeans, especially when they're wet? Nobody, right? No one. So Ben's like, not fair. Everybody has shorts. Can you make me some shorts? And I said, yeah, sure. Well, so I measure his waist just fine. My only mistake was not doing the inseam. Mm. So they were a little snug, so that only women could wear them after that. Yeah, they were honestly just almost a little snug on me, which was questionable. <laughs> it was all around, they were short, they were snug, they were perfect for a female body, and so I'm just gonna ride on the fact Can that- Can I just give though a quick professional take from Sarah as a fashion designer, Nick's blazer for Fiji, yes or no? Mm, well, I mean, David wore a blazer in Cagayan, and Cagayan was much warmer. So I would say, um, yeah, his blazer was appropriate. Okay, great. And my was... pants, yes or no? <laughs> what did you? How did you feel about my pants? Were they were they good for pants for Survivor, or maybe not so much? Mm. Yeah, they were good. They were good. Who but would they dry quickly? They, 
they would dress quickly and they're like comfortable. So yes. Who knew, who is best Who's dressed? Best dressed. I think um, I had best dressed who? Because jacket. Who? I yeah, think who? you had a really good. I did have a really. I had like a members only jacket and I had jeans that I didn't get to wear a lot. And then like I had a t-shirt and then I had like. Um, Nike Pro, yeah, I had like legit, but again, that goes back to me being really smart and they let you send your clothes in. So obviously I'm going to send clothes in that I want to wear, but I would say I was a big fan of Sophie's too. Braslin was the best dress. I think a lot of people really love her. Her, her sweater. Come on. That thing was cashmere. It was nice. That's nice. That was really nice. People and were super confused by Michelle's scarf. They were like, what is that green thing that occasionally pops out yeah. around your shoulders? It's around your waist. It's, un it's unclear. They were not very flexible with my outfit choices. And I think they just didn't really, they didn't really care about me. They were like, no, no, no. Just, you need to wear just like whatever we tell you. <laughs> you get nothing. Whereas some people had full wardrobes they they were just like they just like opened their their wardrobe <laughs> you know what i'll wear this today and i was like guess what i have just this dingy thing and that's it so, yeah you did get shafted you and ben got shafted on clothing i know I honestly thought nick's blazer i i was not for it but i'm glad you're a professional well so nick had like a, like the blazer's more of a multi-purpose tool out there because it's thick so it's warm and then it's like, you can also use it as like a pillow and, and, and as like a cushion. So it's, I don't know, it, he, cause he had long sleeves also. So he was like double covered. Yeah, yeah. No, I understand. It's like functional fashion. Yes, okay. but. I'm just, I've just totally derailed from asking any of these questions because this is just such a natural conversation that I'm loving it. And it's led me to a new a new perp a new question for us. What did you think about Nick's edit? Did you think that he was being a lurker? <laughs> that was the funniest. It was so, I don't care if it was true or not. Don't burst a bubble. That was so no, good. No, totally. Uh, no, Nick was totally not a lurker. I, I thought it was okay, the good. most strange edit ever. I, I mean, didn't even know the teeth thing. Yeah. I didn't even know, know that that got talked about. That was the first time I saw it. And I'm like, what is that all about? Um, I never had, I don't even remember being part of that conversation. His edit was the most bizarre thing that I've ever seen. Yeah, I, no, I didn't think Nick was a lurker at all. <laughs> I'm trying to think, I literally am like. I know. Yeah. He wasn't being, he wasn't. Unless he Nick. was that good of a lurker that we didn't see him <laughs> lurking. And it got caught on camera all the time. And then we're like, oh my gosh, you creep. I mean, that, that's about the only way it could be. It and so that funny. is grade A lurking. In that case, laps in it. Right. In that case, he got a stellar edit. Stellar. It even <laughs> and honestly, it was so funny. It was like... <laughs> <laughs> like the one when he's hanging on the pole and he's like... <laughs> and he literally like wiggled his way in. He's, he's like, like, hey, Jeremy. <laughs> Comedic gold. It, Comedic was, it gold. was really good. Really, really. There were so many great moments this season. I, I had a blast watching it. So, all right. Well, now maybe we will finally get to the questions. Oh, wait. One other update. We're at 745 in ALS uh, fundraising. Thank you, everyone who's, who's donated. That is so fucking amazing. I'm really, really proud of us. I'm not knocking anyone. Whatever you can donate, you can donate. But I love that someone donated 13 cents. At like, some point. At some point, <laughs> someone typed in. The 13, 13 cents. cents. Like, they were yeah. like, I'm not going up another dollar. I'm not going down a dollar. I'm giving you the 13 cents. Somebody <laughs> emptied just their whole bank account. They were like, I have a dollar and 13 cents left in here, and it's going to this live. And I love yeah. it. Yeah. Hey, but you know what? I have mad respect for that person that had 13 cents and gave it to ALS. Me it's too. Amazing. They're legit. Okay, hey, Whoever gave the 13 Are cents, we get a hold of me. At, or type on here, and I will send you a Cops RS t-shirt. Whoever sent the 13 cents. Amazing. Oh my God, I might be able to find that out. I'm, I probably can yeah, look yes. it up and, it. and Sarah, I will send it to you and we'll, yes. and I will absolutely. I need their size. They're getting a Cops Rest t-shirt. This 13 cents did it. Oh, I so love that. Cute. That's such a good idea. I don't know what we're really? drinking anymore. Like I have right. my Natty Light, I have my. <laughs> Exactly. See, you're a fan now, aren't you? No, no, no I, I, wait, I, I don't, don't see. I find, myself, I find myself picking up. Kim, 
Did you, Michelle, not you. Kim, did you pour your beer in your wine? No, no this is nice rosé from oh. the winery that we had on before. And this is the shitty wine that Pete got us because he couldn't no, the find beer. beer that, um... Damn it, Pete, you're lucky you're good looking. He, he is lucky he's good he's looking. He's looking extra good today, too. Yeah. yeah. But he went, he went to two, two liquor stores to check. Apparently the East Coast doesn't like it as much. I don't know. Pete. Well, it's because uh, we buy all of it here. We, I, I'll be rushing to Iowa after the quarantine to yes. come get them bush light. I mean, that she's so drunk on bush light, it's going to be great. I cannot wait to come and visit you and Diddy. Yes, we'll have to go oh, boating. I never, never thought I would say I'd be chomping at the bit to get to Iowa, but alas, here we <laughs> get ready to live. I have a few more questions okay. about Iowa, but I don't, okay. don't want to get I've, down that We've just derailed so much. Yeah, I don't think sorry. I'm not going to be ever invited back. Okay. All right. No, you're going to be, okay. We're going to, we're going <laughs> to, is everyone serious now? Let's we're serious. Right. serious. What? We're we serious got, you now. Be serious. She's oh. talking for her. She's serious. I know. Everyone's serious. Yeah. Everyone's hair is up. One, two, three. Hair up. Let's we're good. Do it. Um, all right. The most common question other than the Fiji line was, um, talk to us a little bit about the challenges that you guys feel women face. I think Sarah, like you kind of spearheaded that. Um, and so everyone just wants you guys to talk a little bit more about it without the edit and you guys just like, you know, being real. Right. So I, I can tell you where like it started from my end is like the day that Michelle and I were talking and you saw me like go be a dick to her like, and I'm like, oh, Michelle. Um, and she more needs so, it. what's that? She needs it. I deserved it. Yeah. I deserved well, it. Well, no, 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 no. Uh, it was more of, I'm trying to process right now and they're all saying, and I'm, I'm trying to run through like, okay. And then, um, and they're like, well, what, what was Michelle saying, you know? And so now I'm kind of, I'm sitting there and I'm like sour about it. Like not at Michelle, but I'm going, wait a second, really? This is what people are like. And then I'm uh, it, like the realization once Nat came back in the game hit like, um, yeah, to people totally think Tony's like a one man show and that like, like I'm his woo or whatever. And I'm like, okay. And so that really irritated me because it's like when I played, when, to when Tony won Kagayan, everybody's like, oh my gosh, he's like one of the greatest ever, blah, 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 blah. Well, I tried to play like the same way he played. I think most people um, imitate, if they come back and play, they imitate the way that their winner played um, because that, that's the only thing you know. And so I, felt that I imitated it well, but I came back with a lot of like baggage and people were really hurt. And so I was having trouble understanding like, wait, I did what Tony did, but yeah, like people are still friends with him, but they are like mad at me. So I didn't understand. So then we're playing the game again. And Michelle, you, you saw it out there a lot too. And Kim and Sophie saw it a ton with me where I would struggle back and forth between wanting to play really hard, but then also like not wanting to, the backlash. So anyway, long story short, we once Nat got back in the game and she's like, oh yeah, um, like Rob saying, like talking mad shit about you over there. So is Parv, like blah, blah, blah. I'm going, wait, what? And so I was really confused because I remembered when we voted Rob out that night, he was basically saying, you know, it's a numbers game and you need to respect it and blah, 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 and would have wanted my vote, but yet he was over there. And I, I, and you know what? That's just what she told us coming in. Maybe he wasn't at the time, but again, perceptions, reality. And so that's where it stemmed because I'm like, wait a second. Had you voted me out, I have to give you my vote out of respect, but yet you're trashing my name over there. And yeah. so... That's where it, and then it kind of snowballed from there. It was a lot. I think there was a lot of conversations between me, you, and Natalie, um, and even prior to that, at, even at the reward, there was a lot of discussion about, um, like, creating your story, right? B because I, I was really big on perceptions and everything, and I learned that in Korong that, okay, Aubrey played this game, but she played it so close to the chest that nobody knew what was going on. And ultimately, and I was, had been crafting my story really vocally to the jury, right? So I think I had kind of saw that a little bit in your game. And I, I knew that Tony was spearheading a lot of this stuff and that you, yes, on the, on the um, backside might have been maybe 
been the one calling the shots, but from perception, it did seem right. phony. So I think a lot of that conversation had potentially got you, like, how is how is that narrative going to come up and how does it shape it? And on the flip side of the narrative, like, if, if somebody like Tony had played a game like me, as he's a strong man, because of the way he played last time, that might actually be valued more. If I played a game like Tony, it wouldn't, I don't think it'd be valued quite as much. So I think the, the gender discrepancy is really a true thing in Survivor. And I don't know how we come back. I think that might be something really innate in, in us. And sometimes Survivor does mirror like how the outside world and our own you know, perceptions, just crazy. I don't know how yeah. about that. I don't know how in the future women can play an aggressive game and be valued or maybe play as somebody like you pulling the strings not so visibly but also be valued i'm that's not what sure. i was going to ask like what is, what do you guys think like what would your advice be to female players now from what you learned from playing well i mean i like i think you see it with like cass even you know cass actually played a, a good game if you break her game down but i also deal with it like it works you know it's predominantly male and if a female at the police department speaks up you know they're like, oh, watch out, she's a bitch. But if a guy is, then he's like a strong, good leader. Like that's literally how it is. So if like a female, it seems like says anything, goes against the grain or speaks her mind, it's like, oh gosh, you know, there she goes. So then we're, women that tend to be more reserved because they don't want that look. But yet guys can speak their mind and it's just taken with a grain of salt or it's respected. Yeah. I think it's really, it's an interesting, I think it's just an interesting topic to bring up because I, I, you mentioned it, obviously, in Tribal. I think we've all felt that way, um, especially because I find it fascinating that a lot of people are saying to not be negative on this post. I don't think that this is a negative conversation. I think, it, mm -hmm. I think it's a conversation that is a reality. There are 14 female winners out of 40 seasons, okay? And Natalie is the first female even get votes at final three and we've had females at, at every single final travel council since um maybe ben's season which is how long well but i won the last i was the last winner and ben was right after me and i don't think um chrissy was the last female to to receive any yeah. that was season 35 yeah so i don't think it's a negative i don't think it's a negative conversation that we're having i think it's i think it's a real conversation that there is a potential gender discrepancy just in the, the, the scope of like power perception right like it, it has to do with how you that people are powerful how to play a strong game and unfortunately i don't know how to i don't know how that will be changed well, Hopefully i think how the woman think... come in on 41 or 42 that somehow straddles the line of powerful but also social enough that people value like the you game. Shouldn't have to be you shouldn't that. Have to, you shouldn't have you to shouldn't be that way. But hopefully, we can have somebody who advocates for her, who plays a really strong, powerful female game. If 41ers, if you're watching this because you haven't been able to leave due to COVID, do damn work for us. We need you. Right, and I, I think if people are being negative about it, it's because they're taking it like way out of context. We're not trying to play victims by any means. No. I'm not, so, and I think that's like what people will say is they're like, oh gosh, you're playing the gender card. No, we're not playing the gender card. We're speaking the truth about why we feel this way. Look, I'm fine. Look, it, things are the way they've been for me for the last 35 years. I've adapted to it. It is what it is. If it changes, great. If it doesn't, I'll be just fine. So I'm not saying this as a crutch. I'm not playing the female card, nothing like that. I'm explaining why I'm feeling the way that I'm feeling. I'm not saying you have to feel sorry for me. It's not, it's not like that. Like, don't I, take it. I don't I feel, take it over the top. I don't feel like, I don't feel, I'm not trying to say that I would like would have gone votes or not. I'm glad that Tony won. I, I, I have been the biggest right. advocate from the get. So I'm not saying this in a negative way. I think it's a conversation that we have brought up that people have brought up people have been curious about we're just trying to conquer your curiosity and i think too, but it's even but it's even like us even talking about it we're getting like hate on it and it's like you guys which you asked yeah we're telling you what, it's the number one like trust me we would rather look we'd rather sit here and talk about bush light but we want to answer people's we questions want to, so I'm just trying to answer your question i will just say too as someone that's never played survivor i did think it was a super relatable moment for any 
certain situations that certain people have been through female or any other certain situation. Like I just like, felt it was very relatable. Yeah, and even, absolutely. Yeah. I think so. you did a really good job bringing that to light. And I'm glad you come on here. And honestly, I've had, I have to say, I have a special guest next week who's a male. And I was telling Kim about it. And she's like, damn, I really thought we were going to do all females. Because every week I had Natalie on and then you on. I'm like, I really had, like, I've had this strong female thing going. And I'm like, man. So, but that's not fair. You got to share the love. I got to share the love. I got to share yeah. the love. Who is it? <laughs> all right. It's going to be great. All right, so, next. moving on, moving on. Right. Now we'll get to something positive. Kim, switch up the tone. <clears throat> people are mad. People are... <laughs> Please. <laughs> on a side note, while we have this break, we've raised $858.20 for AI. So someone's donated seven cents at this point. At this Who point, did it? Did it to be petty. I actually I saw it I can't wait to... I'm going to view, because I can view all of the donations. So I'm... A lot of people are getting Cops for Us t-shirts. But yeah, thank you guys. Uh, honestly, thank you guys so much for donating. And... Really, I, I should just send Cops or Us shirts out. Yeah. Like, really, I you know what? Well, I'll, I'll organize that. Thank you guys so much for donating. Well, Wait, we'll so this on. is what Michelle does for me. She sends me notes of what she would like to touch on. So I'm going to do one more from the Michelle list, and then I'm going to go to the comments. Um, but I, th I like this one. Who did you guys become friends with? That these, are all on, these are all on the Instagram comments. Okay, so there well, were some of the are fine. Um, who did you become friends with that you guys didn't expect to? I think that's a fun one. Yeah, um, for me, I would, well, I would say Sophie, but I knew Sophie and I would get along. Uh, and it's so funny, like, it's like my claim to, like, um, what is it, what's it called when you, like, see the future? Um, like, premonition? Deja vu? No, no. no. Vu? Um, like, um... P? Like ESP? What can, oh, what is, oh, okay, like okay. Oh, like, it's like my ESP is I said to Dalton Ross that Sophie and I would be besties out there. I just knew it. You and What's that? You manifested that. Yeah, but I but Sophie's really cool, and I think we're I think we're really similar, and I hope that's a compliment, Sophie. <laughs> like, well, we can ask her because she'll be on live in. Uh, 20 minutes so yes we can ask um so so yes Sophie was one that I was surprised um that yeah what about you Michelle I think I I'm so I in the game was not really good friends with Tony like we never just never worked together but outside of the game like me and Tony are great friends yeah and I'm able to go over his I've been over his house multiple multiple times I hang out with his wife and his kids and like he just cracks me up I just really and he checks in a lot I'm not somebody I, I kind of am not a great caller texter checker in her it's like one of my I wish that I could do that more and I wish that I did that more it's just life gets in the way but he'll check in all the time and I love that yeah. he's really conscious of like hey, I have this amount of time that I'm driving to work or driving home from work and he'll give me a call. And like, I talk to him more than probably anyone else. So yeah, yeah him. he's great. I just, I really, really love him. And I could not be more happy for him for this win. And people are, yeah. people are so like, are you mad? That you, like, oh, or they apologize. I'm sorry you didn't win. I'm like, I don't feel that way. I, I really feel at peace with the fact that Tony won. I'm so happy. Yeah, he really is so deserving. Like, Tony on the show and Tony outside the show are two different things. Well, they are and they're not. Like, I mean, I knew Tony outside the show, so I got to see, like, the real... We had our real time at night. Like, when everybody would go to bed, like, you know, we would we'd be able to sit up and, like, kind of go over our day and he'd be like hey how you feeling like you know I saw you were down today whatever what what's going on like come on this is your time to let it out like so he he is so sweet he's just so wonderful like I thought you know Kim had said like when she first met him she was like I kind of thought he would be like a character like I kind of thought he would be or I, I, I thought he might be playing a character on TV. Like, he's actually not like that. And then she, you meet him in real life, and you're like, actually, he's just like that. Like, he's really high energy and really, like, like I also yeah. tried to find I had spent, So my whole, fl like, flight to Fiji was with Marissa and the kids. So I was with Marissa 
so much like leading into it and Marissa is so chill and I was yeah. like no I can't like reconcile it in my but, brain. But wouldn't you say like Wyatt and Marissa are alike and then like Tony and I are more alike? Yes. 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 Once yes. you see it together I had just never seen it together and now we've been to their house like numerous times obviously and once you see it together you're like oh yes. like there's obviously it makes sense but yeah. And it does, I do think you make a really good point. I think you and Tony, well, I think you have more like social, um, like you're just, you're more integrated uh -oh. into the social dynamics than he is. Whereas he like likes to stay, res he doesn't mind, yeah, he doesn't care he doesn't what people care. think about it. He wants to stay like on his own, do his own thing, whatever. Like I think you're more social than he is. Um, yeah. But, but I, think I would say, I would say it's more like this, like Tony is surface level with, with like people he doesn't know really well. And if he knows you really well, you're like definitely below the surface. But I just, I like to get below the surface with everybody. Yeah, you like, do get right in. And I, I, that's why I had my guard up with you because I had obviously seen a season before where they were like, be careful, she goes right in and whatever. And honestly, but I did feel, I felt what you were saying because a lot of the times out there you were very like, oh, this is what carried over from my last season. And I think you felt a lot of like, kind of, uh, I think you were a little bit hurt by the fact that you could not dig. I felt like you, you digging in might feel inauthentic. And I think that like, you didn't want that person. Right, right. Wait, are you, this is a Kim question, not a fan right. question. Well, I am a fan, but um, can you just talk to me a tiny bit about that time? Like, like went undercover to the other camp? Like, were you really nervous? You let Tony like put spit on you? No, no, okay, I wasn't nervous at all, but Tony was so nervous and I'm not kidding you. Like, okay, so when I found out I'm going, I'm like, hey, Tony, uh, I'm like, I need to talk to you, meet me at the well. And so I'm like, I go, he's like, about what? And I'm like, it's a secret mission, it's secret mission. And I'm like, I'm like, Tony, just in, he's like, right now, let's go. And I'm like, just chill out. like we can meet up in a minute and he's like yo and he's like walks past me and he's like tapping me and i'm like tony i know i know we'll go we got all day so finally like we meet up and he's like yo what is it what is it? i go just chill out here we look go get a coconut put some um charcoal in it right because i wanted to camouflage and then go hide, did it, hide it by the well you like, did a horrible <laughs> job your camera yeah well no 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 because this is what happened so I, it was supposed to be charcoal. And he's like, yo, I, I put it on the second step when you're on the way to the water and it's down on the left side under a leaf by the big stick. And I'm like, dude. <gasps> okay, so hi. Apron right now, is that what's happening? <laughs> so anyway, long story short, we all would stay up really late and like we will look at the stars and whatever. and. Uh, so early that night, the sun's like not even down yet. And we're like, oh, we're tired. Like, have to go get everybody to go to bed. And um, so Tony's standing up and he's got this stick and he's just standing there. And he's like watching over everyone. And he's like, when the coast is clear, I'll step on your foot. And so I'm like, dude. Like a full secret mission. I know. And, and I mean, so he's, he's like stepped on my foot like 10 times. And I can't go yet. So anyway, he gets there. And he starts putting it on, I'm putting the charcoal on my face. And he's like, yo, it's not staying. And I'm like, dude, he's like, you can't even see it. And I go, dude, that's ash. <laughs> I go, you can't put ash, like it's not even gonna stay. He goes, do you have any water? I go, no, I don't have any water. I'm like, I, I can't. It was a hot mess, but it was like grade A in like enjoyment, TV, TV enjoyment. I loved every minute. He, so he, he, he so spits on it and puts it in there. And then I spit on the ground and he yelled at me and made me spit in the bowl. And then I spit in the bowl and it sprays I, in the face. And, and that's what I'm saying. It was amazing. <laughs> like the way that it all played out, even though it was a bit like fumbling, bumbling, dressed craziness, it was really funny to see you spit in the ash all come up. It was just a blast. <laughs> it was a blast to watch. Like your dynamic with Tony was really so fun. And I think that has to do with you guys being friends outside of the game and just playing together. Wait, but really, really quick, because this is about to end. Um, are you down already? For, are you down for another fifteen minutes? And it I'll just, just do um, 
chat question. It gives an hour. It only gives an hour. We did 15 minutes before you came on. Oh. 15 minutes. Um, I'll do all Kim the chat and, questions. Kim and Sophie will come on. So are you okay just restarting? We've raised 1,200. It's only, Sarah, it's just, only 15 minutes. Just request. Have Sarah request again. Okay, Sarah, re-request. We're going to get knocked off, and then we'll start over just for 15.